gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where we were lucky enough to sit down with Matt Zinman today for episode number 356. We are going to do a five-minute clinic on why you are struggling to follow through. So it was not long ago that I was watching a TED Talk about behavior change, and I've been watching a lot of TED Talks lately. As a matter of fact, I think I've watched like 12 in the last week or so. And this one on behavior change really blew my mind. And he used the analogy of a rocket ship. And I was talking to Kev about this when we were deciding on what episodes to do. Because I think a lot of us right now, especially during COVID, are having trouble changing our behavior to work from home or to stay fit without gyms, things like that. And the analogy was a rocket ship. And basically, there was two main focuses of this analogy. Number one, is the energy that is required for a rocket to take off is like ridiculously high. I think it's something stupid, like 95% of the gas is used in the first, like, I don't know, 10 seconds or something like that. Then when it breaks into the atmosphere, it's already off to the races. So number one is habit formation and behavior change takes a lot of time and energy at first. And then once you build a habit, you're good to go. But what this episode is about is about friction. And what they said is that a rocket ship needs to have very, very strong aerodynamics in order to get to, let's say, the moon. Mm -hmm. And so that's the analogy for us. So how do we understand that changing our behavior is going to take a lot of time and energy, but also we need to make sure that any friction to doing the good behavior is reduced and any friction to doing bad behaviors is actually increased. In other words, make it hard to do what's bad for us and make it really easy to do what we want to do. And just so people know, friction is basically like difficulty, right? It's, it's more difficult. It's creating resistance, friction, right. resistance. So some things that say they're free are not actually free. Right. And that's what I want to preface this with. I, one of my podcast clients use this example. So I'm going to steal it from him because it's a fire example. But back when I was a kid, I remember cereal boxes. It would literally say on the side, if you cut this out and send it in, you got to go to the post office and you have to put a stamp on this envelope and you have to drop it in the thing and you have to wait like two to six weeks. But we'll give you this little action figure. Now, that, what that is is a mail-in rebate. A lot of places have that. If you pay attention, you will hear this a lot more on television. Car parts are, anonym, are like synonymous with this. They do this all the time. You go, you get your battery, you return your old battery with the mail-in rebate and you get like $30 off. But the reason that only 40 to 60% of people do this is because the friction is too high. I'm not going to spend five minutes cutting it out. I'm not going to go to the post office. I'm not going to put a stamp on it and then wait six weeks for a little figurine that's made of plastic. That is a great example of the negative side of friction. Now, Alan is going to talk about the opposite of that, but think about that. Think about how many steps there are for me to do that one thing. Think about how difficult it is compared to like, and again, this is first world problems, but going through the drive through versus going in. Think of the difference in the friction between parking your car, getting out of your car, turning your car off, walking into the place, waiting in line, okay, doing the same thing versus sitting in your car and talking to somebody through the speaker and then getting your food or drink handed to you. The difference in friction is giant between those two examples. So, <clears throat> this is something I've said in my speeches. Good habits are hard to create and easy to break. Bad habits are easy to create and difficult to break. And the reason why, one of the reasons why is the friction. So for example, we've all been watching our favorite show on Netflix. And for me, it's Friends. For you, it's Parks and Rec. Oh. And it, it actually takes an extra step to stop it from going to the next episode. So that's the bad version. Kevin, again, already gave an example of that. For a good version, what you want to do, lifestyle design is basically designing your environment. We talked about designing your environment for success. That's a lot of what this is. If you want to stop watching so much TV, put your TV in the closet and unplug it. It's going to take a lot of time and energy for you to get the TV rather than just click on, right? right? So I spent most of my childhood without cable and I never really watched the news. I never really watched TV much. And so- what I didn't realize is that that actually helped me a lot because I wasn't wasting a lot of time on cable because cable is designed to where you have a thousand channels, you turn the TV on, it's really easy to get lost in the sauce. 
so to speak. So here's an example of the way that I've used friction to make a bad habit go away and a good habit come. So for me, I struggled with alcohol. And for a long time, I would, when I lived with my mother, for example, I, it, whenever she would be having someone over to drink, she would have the vodka out on the counter and I would notice it. And then all of a sudden I would have a craving that I wanted to drink. This doesn't happen as much anymore, but I remember I used to ask her, do you mind keeping the alcohol out of sight so that I don't have that trigger? So I'm creating more friction to drinking alcohol. With books, I remember I set the intention to start reading a lot more books early on in my journey, probably like five years ago. And even right now in the background, I've got an entire bookshelf. If you want to start reading more, make it easy. Right. So for me, I always travel with three books on me. I have the compound effect on me. I have the 15 invaluable laws of growth on me and I have essentialism. And so they're actually right here to my left. And Kevin knows this. They're always in my backpack and my backpack is always on me. Why? Because I want to make sure that I can always work and be productive no matter where I am. And I want to make sure that I'm always reading or at least consistently reminded of those principles in those books. And so if you want to set up your life for success, just imagine waking up in the morning where everything that's a good habit for you that you've decided in advance that you want is right there and available. Your running shoes are there. You want to run in the morning. Okay, you flip on YouTube motivational videos right on the playlist ready for you. Um, in the shower, you've got your toothbrush in there. You, you've got your flosser. I've got my flosser in the shower. I always floss my teeth because it's always there. So I've made those good habits really, really easy versus someone who, you know, always has junk food in the house, who, you know, wants to work out, but they have a gym membership that's 45 minutes away, right? Those are two very different lives. So the main takeaway Kevin and I wanted for you there is ask yourself the question like, is my life designed where the things I want to do are easy and the things I want to stop doing are difficult? I think this is one of the reasons why coaching is so important because I was on a, a call with somebody, a client today. And one of the things I said was like, how do you know what you're supposed to do today? And we got to the point where it was like, you need to know the night before you go to bed. Right. Because you're, what you're doing is create, you have way too much friction on what you should be doing. It's what you feel like you should be doing, not what you actually should be doing. That's one of the benefits of having a coach that's going to hold you accountable. Right. You're going to help you, specifically Alan and myself, we're going to help you design a system of success that are the things that you should be doing every day. You might not feel like it. I don't feel like posting on social media today, but I do know that's one of the most important things for me in terms of, you know, getting my message out there, impacting people, getting more followers, getting more speeches, getting more clients. So at the end of the day, you have to lower the friction between you and your goals. And that's making sure your habits are easily accessible. One thing I wanted to say here too is, you know, I did fitness coaching for a really long time and you notice common patterns, sleep, hydration, nutrition, training, and mobility. Hydration, whenever they gave me a low rating, I always knew the solution exactly. I have my water right here. Kevin just showed his on camera. It always came down to that. Yep. I said, how often is your water bottle on your person? Every single time it was something like, oh, like I lost my water bottle or I misplaced it or I, you know, I've been drinking out of these plastic water bottles or whatever. It's like, it's always that same thing. There are certain commonalities to success that you've got to pick up on. And so one of the other things that I wanted to mention though is in the weekly mastermind, we talk all the time about these different principles that are going to help you succeed. So we did one on the five buckets, for example. Once you're aware of your buckets and which ones need to be filled and which ones don't, now we can start to strategize about how to actually make your life better, especially when it comes to designing your associations, designing your environment, designing your system of success to make sure that you're consistently and sustainably making progress towards your dreams. And speaking of the mastermind, we are having a very special guest, Mark Metry. If you're listening to this on Monday around noon, uh, when, when this is out, Mark Metry will be joining at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live, and he's going to be there to talk about social anxiety. So hammer questions because he has, I read the book. I was, I did the audio book with him. So I got to read it before anybody else, which was fire, but it was an amazing book with like a lot of really good takeaways, a lot of good lessons because he's experienced this for a long time. And he is a wizard at 22 years of age. Well, Kev, you used to have a lot of anxiety and you don't have nearly as much as you used to. Yeah. Would you, it's interesting because I've witnessed you have less anxiety. Is it in part because of that book? I think for me, it's, it's in part because I went more internal. Right. The S stuff. 
Yeah, because spiritual side. I'm not being affected as much by the external world as I was. That the stronger your internal world is, the the less it affects you when things are happening externally. So I think that was it for me. Like, honestly, yeah, that that was a big thing for me, and that's why I'm I'm talking to everybody about it. I think it's under underutilized. I remember we had that tough conversation. Then we we got to go, but I was talking to Kevin and Mark in the old studio, and. Kev had a lot of anxiety and was struggling with a lot of anxiety back then. And I remember, I remember saying to him that I don't know if that's sustainable right. in this game, dude, you've changed so much since then. That wasn't even that long ago, man. It was what, no, four or five was, months ago. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, crazy. So th- these principles and dude, that was very synchronistic too. Cause Mark asked you to interview him not long after that for the audio book, but it's been the habits. Honestly, it's been the habit of meditation. It's been the, the habit of morning journaling and gratitude and visualization. Like that's, I, I attest it to that, to that more than anything. The meditation? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. For sure. Um, all right. I think we're out of here. Yeah. We don't know what we're doing on Wednesday yet, so we'll figure that out. So if you guys hear this, you want to join that live mastermind, Mark Metry will be in the house live and in charge. Talk about a little social anxiety. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will talk to you on Wednesday. <laughs> talk to you soon. Bye.